Hi, I hope everyone is safe. Uh, my name is Rajiv Godsey. I'm here with Space ML, and I'm going to talk about developing a multi resolution search ranking pipeline. I worked on this project as an AI researcher at Space ML in conjunction with the NASA Impact Team. I have to thank everyone for the support that I received along the way, but in particular, my advisors and co authors, Anirudh Kul, Meher Kassam, and Sita Ganji. Thanks for all the help. Let's jump right in. Why did we build what we did? Well, we were primarily trying to improve performance in the area of content-based image retrieval, or CBIR. Suppose you had a large collection of images. Given some query image, CBIR allows us to find images in a collection that have similar content. The reason that this task is not trivial is that content tends to be subjective. The closest pixel for pixel match, for example, might not contain the same category of object within it. So we have to turn to more complicated strategies. CBIR is extremely important and is the basis of a lot of research in machine learning. Namely, when looking at tasks like a reverse image search engine, how can we efficiently and accurately find matches of a query image in a large data set? Why is this question pertinent to earth science? Well, earth scientists are certainly no stranger to large data sets. We, in our research, were pr primarily motivated by satellite data. There is an ever-growing stockpile of satellite imagery, and yet in many cases, we have no meaningful filter for it, so it's hard to navigate. Essentially, our goal in CBIR is to try to find meaningful differences between very similar data points so that we could take an arbitrary query and find the unique best match among the pile. This can be described as a needle in a haystack problem. But how far does this problem scale up within the world of Earth science? Researchers in the field may need to search for a hurricane, a sandstorm, a polar vortex in the wide expanses of planet Earth. In this case, we're searching through 200 million square miles of surface area per day. And just how many years of data do we have? 20 so far. So our aim was to make it easier for Earth scientists to find whatever needle they're looking for, no matter how big or small it is. Hopefully you can see how such a development would be important but let's see why improvement is necessary in the first place. To that end, let's check out how normal content-based image retrieval works. As you may know, AI is all about representing an input, like an image, as a small representation called an embedding, like 2,000 floating point numbers. There's one special property these embeddings try to follow. Similar concepts appear closer together, and dissimilar ones appear much further apart. So on that account, Finding similar images should be simple and effective. You take images, pass them through a convolutional neural network, which gives you embeddings, and then you simply find other images whose embeddings are near to the query images. Unfortunately, it's not so simple. There are a few problems, particularly with multi-class multi-label data sets that our research aimed to address. While our use case concerns unlabeled data, we would want matches to contain as many similar objects as possible, meaning when thinking about problems in CBIR, we can extend our thinking to those that concern images that can be classified in more than one way. This leads to a couple of problems. One is that size matters. Consider a standard image file in the MODIS dataset of satellite imagery. It stores a region of 1200 kilometers by 1200 kilometers. Most AI models compress input to a size of 224 by 224 pixels, which means a lot of details will get smushed away, especially smaller ones. Importantly, some objects are tiny and some are huge in the reference frame of an image. The real problem arises since the same object, like a wildfire, you can see on the right, can be both big and small in an image, but we still want them to match. So given an image, having the ability to search at multiple zoom levels becomes important. As the ImageNet 2014 paper analyzed, bigger objects get better recognition. Uh, so, because pretty much anyone can search for big things on their own, but searching for small objects is hard. And not every phenomenon is the size of a category five hurricane. The next problem in remote sensing is that a lot can happen in a 1200 by 1200 kilometer plot. There can be multiple phenomena in the same image. Heck. We just escaped 2020, when five tropical storms appeared in the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. Again, these two problems are relevant because satellite images are a canonical example of a multi-class, 
multi-label uh, data set. So we have to worry about both multiple incidents of a particular phenomenon in one frame and the problem of searching for things both big and small. Let's take a concrete example of a high resolution image. There's a lot of nice details, forest, hills, and yes, a wildfire. Let's say you're interested in finding similar images. One approach is to take the image and divide it into overlapping tiles, query each tile and aggregate the data in order to get a more complete image of what is going on. This is similar to how Google and Bing take you from billions of web pages on the internet to the top 10 results you see. They work incrementally on a gradually narrower data set until they produce the top matches in the end. Similarly, we were motivated in wanting to take a bunch of matches that arise from each tile and gradually narrow them down. Hopefully we can make this a little bit more clear by looking step-by-step step at the way our pipeline worked. In level one, we broke the image down into tiles. You can look at this simple example and found a hundred nearest neighbors for each tile. Those candidates then comprised a candidate list. Then we moved on to level two. But since many of the level one matches will be in the same location, we can group those together in order to reduce the candidate set. Here you can see that if we join uh, data points that are in similar geographic locations, for example, we can further reduce the candidate list. For level three, we then had to take the candidates and rank them using one of several potential mathematical strategies. There are several ways to go about this, and this was the part that required the most creativity. Say we have an image that has several match tiles at various distances, as you can see here, listed as D1, D2, D3. Distances, for simplicity's sake, just represent how good a match tile is. The lower the distance, the closer the match. How do we translate this data into a score that we can rank directly? A simple strategy could be giving each match tile the same vote uh, in which image is best, but that lacks nuance and doesn't reward stronger matches or closer ones. Thus, somewhat undemocratically, we're not interested in giving everyone an equal vote. If a match tile is closer, it should have more of a say. One strategy that achieves this would just sum up the inverses of the distances between the embeddings of match tiles. This does reward the really close matches, but it doesn't put the distances in context to the other ones which have been matched. And it might over reward tiles which are marginally closer than others at low distances. The strategy that we ended up settling on was a bucket vote. It first found a sorted list of all the distances at a resolution. It then gave each tile a score inverse to the percentile in which its distance lay. It took some of the intuition from the inverse distances strategy by creating an inverse relationship between distance and score. But by using percentiles, it measured the strength of each match relative to the strength of the field of matches. The data is thus put into context. Then we get our results. Hooray! We have thus queried a very large data set and produced a final output of best matches. Throughout this process, we have a pipeline which gradually narrows down what we're looking for. Each component from top to bottom takes a longer time and scrutinizes each image a little bit more, but has to work on a reduced number of images. At first, when testing our, uh, our approach, we used the UC Merced Landsat data set. Even though this data set was a single label data set, which limited both our ability to outperform standard search and the ability to generate a metric more meaningful than accuracy, it did demonstrate our ability to produce some benefit at all ranks for actual satellite images. The graph displays the accuracy at each rank listed. Namely, it looks at the probability that the X best match that the pipeline found would match the category of the query image. Quantitatively, this was the first measure of success. We had a generic performance benefit for satellite images, but how could we extend that to show that we could solve for the problems of multi-class multi-label data sets? We needed a large multi-class multi-label data set that, well, had labels. Unlike the unlabeled data sets that we would eventually be searching in our use case, we would need these labels to validate our results. To that end, I chose the MS Coco data set. Uh, we did. 34 gigabytes of data, 80,000 images, 
80 distinct categories with three to seven types of objects, normally in the same image. So this allowed us to prove both scalability and whether or not we can solve for the problems of multi-class multi-label data sets that we've already discussed. Maybe this is easier to see with an example. We have different objects and different sizes of objects just in these example images. It's perfect because there's a lot going on. In this way, we can test our ability to find both big and small objects and to find multiple phenomena. Now for the results we got from Coco. We tested our multi-resolutional strategy with square tiles of size 128, 256, and 512 pixels versus a traditional strategy that just searched for embeddings on the whole image. We graph the F1 score, the harmonic mean between precision, which measures the proportion mat of matched categories that were correct, and recall, which measures the proportion of correct categories that were matched of these two strategies. We graphed F1 at the rate K, seeing how the first best match, the second best match, the third best match, et cetera, of each model performed. First, you can see the difference on ranks two through 50 with multi-resolutional search in blue and traditional search in orange. We see a pretty consistent and sizable gap of five to 10% and a less steep drop-off. Moreover, you can see now what happens at rank one. Multi-resolutional search jumps to 98% while traditional search stays at around 50%. The reasons for this continue to confuse us just a little, but we find some explanation in the fact that multi-resolutional search um, does not require as many approximations since on aggregate, if there are any errors for approximations, they tend to go away. And as a result, it might be significantly better at finding the original image that was embedded if it is searching a query set, um, which or if it is using a query image, which is contained in the data set which it is querying. To see just how powerful that is, you can look at some examples of differences between the two pipelines. We're better able to identify the individual objects in the image as opposed to trying to match the whole image. With multi-resolutional search, we find people, horses, and fields, whereas we just find similar looking images if we use a whole image search. Moreover, we improved on the problem of dual counting. CNNs often have difficulty with this task, as you can see, but multi-resolutional search always matched two giraffes to a query of two giraffes, um, instead of just finding an image that contained giraffes, which is what CNNs have proven to be really good at. Thus, in conclusion, we identified two problems that traditional search methods would face in a satellite image search ranking pipeline and developed an alternative strategy to reduce the effects of those problems. We use industry standard techniques and approaches for development and testing and found a marked benefit to our approach over traditional methods. Although we first showed that the pipeline works on Merced, we further proved that it is generally applicable and works on MS Coco, a very different data distribution, more akin to real world satellite data sets we might see in similar problems. But why does it matter? These improvements in CBAIR that we have demonstrated have the potential to accelerate discovery in earth and space sciences. Scientists in need of data sets with specific phenomena can rely on being able to accurately and efficiently search the vast amount of satellite data that we have for their desired phenomena. In short, the problem that motivated our research is indeed addressed directly by results. Moreover, since we are able to prove such a general result, we can apply CBIR to many topics you might have seen during this workshop from observing the sun to predicting weather, much of the observed data that is relevant to research seems to be in the form of images. If we have observed an advantage of viewing images as the aggregate of many tiles, then not only can we create better data sets, but we can also gain better insights from trained networks. Going even broader, consider just how much smarter we can get if we have meaningful ways of understanding the vast swaths of data that are out there not just choosing the data that we need to conduct research projects, but finding a faster and more accurate way to match any sort of image, especially in the real world when data sets get tricky. How can people use my code in, uh, to conclude? Well, the pipeline was built with modularity in mind. As a result, whether you have a model that you want to use or use one of our pre-trained ones, whether you want to try out an L3 strategy or go with bucket vote, you can customize all of these parameters uh, and basically call everything from one function. In short, this field and the world writ large have a lot of data, and we're getting more of it by the second. Our research can hopefully make it a little easier to understand and search, so that each person can find the meaningful bits within it. Thank you.